Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop and we're going to be working on steering racks. I'm going to show you how to take them apart, put them back together and hopefully make them work. Uh, we can walk down over here and I'll, I'll start talking about these things. They started putting the, the power steering racks on the, on the shadows and the corniches, I think in 1979. Um, and then they used this same basic rack setup all the way through 98, 99, the end of the Spirit Spurs series and the Bentleys. And here is the early version. This was on the early uh, Shadow 2s. Um, it's a Berman steering rack is what it is. Uh, it has these mounting pads that bolt to the subframe. In the early version, if you have one, you can look up on the top here and you can see that there's a snap ring and a seal that goes in. Um, there's another version that came out a little later, which I don't have a spare one right now, that looks just like this, only the top looks like this. <clears throat> so what it has is it has a wiper seal that is put on there and then pressed and fold it over. Um, and then this is the latest version, or the last version, and you can see the mounting pads look totally different. Let me put this right there. See how that is completely different from that. Uh, what they have is some blocks that are offset and kicked forward that go to the subframe, and then this bolts to the blocks. You said this is a Berman, is that the manufacturer? The or? manufacturer of this term, I guess. I don't know who, yeah, I think this is Berman also. Um, when they went from this type to this type, it seems like the, the top seal held better. Typically what happens to them uh, is either a boot, this one's been pulled off, a boot will rip, right, and garbage gets in there, road dirt, water, grime, and then there's a rack inside that has seals on the end that goes back and forth, and then it, it kind of messes them up is what happens. and then. Uh, sometimes uh, the seals would just let go anyways without this boot going bad and you'll add power steering to it you know and then it'll be fine and all of a sudden it starts growling again because it's low and it's got air mixing in there and you won't see any leaks <clears throat> what happens is there's not fluid inside these boots in here there should not be any fluid but the seals leak around and then they come in here and they, these will fill up I've seen them like big balloons and, and uh, like an idiot the first time I stuck a thing in it and I got a shower because it was under pressure at that point from the rubber boots. Um, I rebuild all these here in-house. There are a lot of steering rack rebuilders out there. They'll sell them for $300 uh, exchange and they're typically painted gray and they're hit and miss. I've, I've had customers come in, well, they put two rebuilds on it, and it still leaks. And just recently I had that happen. So, you know, I, 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 one thing I don't trust about most rebuilders is the people doing the work on them don't really, aren't really experienced or high paid. So it's just, a, you know, it's a, like an assembly line, and their attention to detail and making sure things are right may not be there. I don't trust a lot of that stuff. I rebuild my own transmissions too, so um, that's just my way of doing it. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll we'll end up taking both of them apart, and then I'll put one together so you guys can see how how they go together. Essentially, the way these things work, um, you have this part right here is connected to your steering wheel. It goes into a valve assembly in here, and you'll see that there are two ports that are not connected to anything. One of them is the, the one down here. This is the high pressure from the pump. So your power steering pump, which is run by the, the fan belts, will put high pressure in here. When the steering is not activated, that high pressure fluid just stays low pressure, and it comes back out this other one back up to the reservoir, and it's just recirculating, not under pressure. Soon as you turn this shaft, there's some valving inside that works against the resistance of the wheels. So once you apply a little bit of torque on there, it, it switches it. There's some valves in there. And it'll send high pressure fluid to either end of this rack. So what you're getting is you're getting high pressure fluid, depending on which way you're turning, that's pushing from the outside back and forth. Okay. Um, 
So with that being said, we'll start taking it apart. I start by taking the lines off. There's that one. This one over here. These are 15 millimeter. And this one we'll get when we get that off. So. And for this service, it does have to be taken off the car. You Absolutely. Can't do it on the car. Absolutely. Now, when the boot goes bad, a lot of people say, well, can't you just do it on the, the car? And essentially, to do it on the car, you have to loosen all the bolts, take this end off, slide all that off, put it back on. Um, and I say, no, I don't do that. I'd rather do it correctly. Because you're almost there anyways. You got everything off. How much time does it take to remove it from the car? Uh, I think to put one on and take it off and drive it, bleed it, all that kind of stuff, about three hours. Okay. Depends on the car, some cars is, are harder. Which is why they're probably thinking they don't want to take it off the car. <coughs> and to get parts, you go through the Berman company? I get parts through wholesale manufacturers. You can buy, I think they sell kits on like flying spares and intro cars. Here's the tool I use to adjust a Rolex. <laughs> Hopefully this will not be too tight and I can loosen it here. <laughs> it's bigger than my wheel wrench. That's right. Okay, so one thing, if you're doing this at home, which I don't recommend, but some people are pretty ingenuitive, um, you have to pay attention on these two lines. And why do you think you have to do that? Because if you switch them, which is possible, it's not real easy, then you're going to be working against yourself. It's going to be pushing against the direction you're trying to turn. So, And it makes the steering wheel do this when you do it, just so you know, because it has happened. I think that pump runs up to about 1200 PSI max and the only time you're going to get max usually is under full lock which I don't recommend if you don't have to and I'll, I'll talk about that later on once we know. When they leak or the boots go bad. Could it be 12 months apart? It should be years apart. Okay. It's not something you do on a regular basis. So, now one other thing when you start to take this apart is you've got to pay attention to this, the orientation. This is how it is on the car. So this is a left-hand drive. This goes up to the steering wheel. So this has three bolts, so obviously you can put it on three ways. I always point it down to the left. I love that sound. I remember I worked at a shop once and the owner loved that sound because it was the sound of money, he said. <laughs>